as we all know, the most important thing future law students have clamored for this week is more in the time of COVID-19 jokes. Well, your prayers are answered. The LSAC's new FAQ on LSAT Flex is titled Law School Admission in the Time of COVID-19. Pandemic right here. Man, I really haven't seen that reference anywhere on the internet lately. But LSAC did actually release some useful new information, so here's an update to our update on LSAT Flex. Welcome to The Legal Level, a podcast from TestMax. I'm Yelena, one of your companions on the road to the legal field. Your other companion, Brandon, is busy sewing tiny masks to keep all of his 1980s Star Wars action figurines safe from coronavirus. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of the latest LSAT Flex news, and we'll both be back at you soon. The Legal Level is available from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever you're listening to it right now. If you liked today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and tell a friend. After you're done listening, if you'd like to learn more, you can talk with a 99th percentile LSAT instructor by texting LSAT to 310-818-7743. Or if you'd like your question to be featured on the show, email podcast at testmaxprep.com and you may just get your wish. So... LSAC finally answered the two biggest questions students have been asking about the LSAT Flex. What are you, a lawyer? When will it be? And will the single LR section be double-weighted? First question first. The test will predominantly be held on May 18th and 19th. Beginning on April 22nd, LSAC will offer you the chance to register and choose your test date and time. Just in case it fills up fast and you can't grab your preferred slot, It's best to keep your schedule as flexible as possible for those dates until you confirm a testing time. Now, some test takers may test later in the week based on their specific remote proctoring requirements. That's probably LSAC speak for disability accommodations. This happens all the time with the in-person test, too. Sometimes accommodated test takers end up testing on a different date, especially if LSAC isn't able to group them with others whose accommodations are identical. Regardless of what day of the week you're tested, LSAC is planning to release all LSAT Flex scores on June 5th. As to the second question, no logical reasoning won't be double weighted on the LSAT Flex. Obviously, that changes the game of the LSAT a bit. Instead of LR providing 50% of your raw score, it'll count for about 33%. So, yes, if LR is your strong section, this is the time to put in some extra reps on your weaker sections. But, Good news for students who score best on LG or RC, you'll now get 33% of your score instead of 25% from each of those. And speaking of LG, a lot of you have asked about scratch paper for diagramming. The short answer is now, yes, you will be allowed to use it, but they're not releasing full details on that subject just yet. Stay tuned, but for right now, just assume you will have as much paper as you need. Now, if you'd rather opt out of LSAT Flex, you now have until Friday, April 17th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time to do that. That's an extension of the prior deadline, which was April 15th. As for future tests, LSAC is tentatively beginning to talk about repeating the LSAT Flex. If restrictions on public gatherings are not lifted by June, another LSAT Flex could be test taker's only option. So if you're registered for June or July, this might be a good time to start thinking about taking some practice tests in flex mode. So flex mode is live on LSAT Max right now. You'll need to use it in a browser rather than in the LSAT Max app. And ideally, you should practice on the computer you'll be using to take your LSAT flex test. Once you log in at lsatmax.com and choose a practice test, you'll be able to select take LSAT flex exam. Now, one last interesting update from LSAC before I let you get back to frantically pulling up your logic game score. They're really going out of their way to reassure students that law schools will accept the LSAT Flex. So if you've been thinking about skipping it just because you're afraid it'll count against you in admissions, LSAC claims it won't. Of course, there are no guarantees, but it would be pretty embarrassing for them to offer this option and then have students end up iced out of law school for taking it. So maybe you can take some kind of reassurance from knowing that LSAC is very motivated to convince law schools LSAT Flex is equivalent to the typical LSAT. 
which kind of begs the question, if a three-section at-home test is just as good at assessing our potential as five sections in a classroom, uh, why weren't we doing it this way all along? What, like it's hard? Maybe that'll be answered in the next FAQ. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon with another full episode. And as always, we'll keep you updated on LSAT News. Please subscribe to The Legal Level and tell all your friends to do the same. If you have more questions about the LSAT Flex, just email podcast at testmaxprep.com or text LSAT to 310-818-7743. You can also check the show notes for some links to helpful resources directly from LSAC. All of us at TestMax hope you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are in the world. See you next time.